Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Link Technologies Online Tower Coverage.com webinar. My name is Dennis. I'm going to be your presenter for today. Today, we're going to be looking at TowerCoverage.com, and we're going to be doing a presentation on our version three of our new product. So today, TowerCoverage.com. We're going to cover what is it and how does it work. So Tower Coverage is a radio frequency mapping application. It is designed to build coverage maps based on any RF system. Now, any RF system means just that. It doesn't matter if it's UHF, VHF, uh, 2.4 gigahertz, 3 gigahertz, 6 gigahertz, 11, uh, 23. It doesn't really matter which, uh, which frequency platform that you need. It uh, doesn't matter the power levels, etc. We can build coverage maps based on pretty much any RF system. We also have radio systems built for common configurations, so that if you have, let's say, four sectors, you can have four radio systems, one for each sector, and you can quickly populate all your fields to quickly create coverages. We can do link path analysis between two points, taking, into land, uh, taking land clutter data into consideration, as well as link groups to view your backhauls. Lastly, we have multi-maps, which is a collection of maps. That feature allows you to view your overlays, view all of your EUS data, all the data that comes into TowerCoverage.com. We also have website integration. And this provides an easy way to display your coverage map or a sign-up form on your website. It also provides a simple method for users to self-pre-qualify with end-user submissions viewable on your maps. That allows your website to work for you. TowerCoverage.com also has APIs. We have a complete API system, pretty much to the extent that you don't even need to log into our system to use our APIs. But we also have an API push on our end-user submissions. So within five minutes, when a customer submits end-user submission information on your website, within five minutes, you're going to get that information pushed, the results of that, pushed to your uh, CRM or billing system. Now, one term that I want to kind of mention that I've already said a couple of times is we use a term called EUS. And what the EUS is, is the end user submission system. This allows you to have potential end users that come to your website and submit information in an effort to get your service. Now, this is primarily used for WISPs and ISPs that use tower coverage to service their clients. So now let's get started on how to use towercoverage.com. So the very first thing you'll notice is we have a new splash page, a new stats page, a new dashboard, if you will. At the very top, we have a tutorial, and you can turn on or off that tutorial and explains the features on any page that you're on. We have our dashboard, which has our 10 most recent activities. We also have our overall uh, coverage count our API count, as well as all of our overall statistics, our links, link groups, number of radio systems, number of saved EUS searches. We also have our current end user submissions dashboard, which gives us our current today's EUS, our saved EUS searches. And also we have two wonderful little charts here that gives us our end user submissions for the past 30 days, as well as the past 12 months. We also have the current date and time, as well as the tower coverage news uh, as it comes out. So features of the mobile homepage. We have done quite a few uh, or quite extensive uh, development on our mobile site. And you can visit our mobile site by going to www.towercoverage.com. It's completely integrated with our existing application. Here you can get the mobile dashboard. You get the 10 most recent activities our today's EUS count, our TC News button, as well as the current coverage and API count. Note that we've made the, the page big so that you can click on it with your finger, especially if you are on a cell phone. Uh, again, we have our mobile dashboard menu button, which is the triple uh, dots or dashes up here at the top. When you click that, you'll get the actual menu system. Here it allows you to access things such as EUS data, sites, coverages, multi-maps, so on and so forth. Now, while most of our feature set is available on the mobile application, there are some special things that are only available on the main website, and that is the non-mobile website. Most of those do not really pertain to uh, 
a daily use of the system. It would just be settings, things like that. So let's take a look at the My Account page off of the dashboard. So notice we have this wonderful new menu on the left side. And in here we have our stats, EUS, sites, coverages, multi-maps, link, link groups, radio system, orders, and account. And down at the bottom you have the account page. And this gives you your company profile, your users, your land cover settings, which we will talk about next, your API and EUS settings, which we'll talk about those in re uh, regular uh, the sections that they are in. You can also manage your subscription. You can uh, add antenna patterns, add overlays. You can visit the tirecoverage.com wiki, as well as view your payment details. And that is a invoicing system, so that some customers do need uh, a invoice for payments, and uh, you can view any invoice directly on the payment details page. Next, we have our land cover. This is probably one of the very first things that you need to edit. So here in Missouri, the evergreen forest and uh, uh, distigious needleleaf and broadleaf forest, uh, the height is about, say, 20, uh, 75 feet. In this particular setting, we would go in here and we would adjust these to the best settings as uh, is in your area. Something else to keep in mind is the urban buildup low. Some roads are classified as urban buildup low depending on where you're at in the country. Because of that, you may need to set the height very low on that. However, if you are in an area that you have elevated overpasses, you may need to set that according to their, their actual heights. The big thing here is that you need to modify your settings to be in the areas that you are in. Next, we have our users page. Inside our users page, we have the ability to create users, set the user type, as well as set a start page as well if we need them to. We also have the mobile users page here. As seen, uh, we have the mobile users. We can add users, set username, password, and email, as well as start pages on the mobile site. Next, we go to overlay management. Overlays must be KMLs. They cannot be KMZs. They also must be under 3 meg in size. All you have to do is click Add Overlay, select an overlay name, and select your file. And then that will place that overlay as available overlays on any of your coverages or multi-maps. Next, we have our antenna patterns. Our antenna patterns are exactly what they sound like, as they are the antenna pattern based on the manufacturer spec. Now, we have an official tool to create antenna patterns by downloading the antenna pattern creation document. Inside this spreadsheet, it gives you all the necessary information to make sure that your antenna pattern is correct and accurate, as well as to save the antenna pattern to be uploaded. If you click Add New, as we go forward here, you can also upload your own and ANT files. Now, we do keep a number of antenna files from the manufacturers available on our website. This is really good, but you need to make sure that those are accurate. We always and only add websites or add antenna patterns directly from the manufacturer. In other words, we will not add antenna files if you go to the manufacturer and download it or get an email from the manufacturer and email it to us. It must come directly from the manufacturer. Otherwise, you can upload any of your own .ant files as you wish to. There are several things, several checks that are done to make sure that they are valid ANT files. Once you click the new button, you'll have the new antenna name, a beam width filter, manufacturer name, and then you have to select your actual .ant file and then update. Now, the beam width filter is very important. This kind of goes all back to our EUS, our end user submission system. The example I'll use is, let's say you have an antenna that is facing due north, and that antenna is, let's just say, 90 degrees. If the beam width filter is 90 degrees, then that means anything that falls outside of that 90 degrees uh, from the antenna, would this antenna or that coverage using this antenna pattern would not be accepted in our EUS. In other words, that EUS submission would disregard this particular coverage because it falls outside or the customer falls outside the beam width filter. So it's just important to make sure that you make sure you put in an accurate beam width filter. Next we have sites. Sites are basics based on GPS location of your towers. 
You can also do a search via Google Maps and uh, uh, address searches as well to drop a pin on the location. You can also specify the default height of the tower in which case your uh, equipment is installed. There's also a bolt import CSV template available for you. So to get the sites, you're going to click sites and that's going to bring up all your sites. Notes that you have a search, lat long, default height group, you can search all those. If you wish to, you can check the boxes here and delete any of the ones that are checked. Otherwise, you're just going to create a new site by clicking the new sites button. So in the new site, you're going to need to enter a site name. Every site has to have a name. You have to specify a default height, either in feet or meters. If you specify it in feet, it will automatically convert the, uh, the height to meters for you. You must specify a latitude and longitude. Now note, we store all of our variables by dotted decimal, so we have a decimal value. However, if you have degrees, minutes, seconds, you can put that in and it will automatically convert to longitude and latitude for you. You also have the ability to specify a description a group, as well as a map pin style. Down here at the bottom, you do have options to import from CSV and the download import template to know exactly how your CSV file needs to be. On our mobile view, we have our sites. You can click on any of the sites. You can view that site, and then you can hit edit those, uh, those sites. Or you can click the new button. This is an existing site. Note we have the site there, and we have a settings or delete button at the bottom. If we hit the settings button, we can change the site name, change the default height, change its position by moving the pin or by setting the longitude latitude, as well as putting any of the site profile optional information in. We also can hit new and then place the site based on a pin location. That will automatically update the site settings to give you the longitude and latitude. Next we have our radio systems. Again, radio system is simply used to save common values across multiple coverages. Note that all the values are actually saved on the actual coverage. So by you modifying a coverage to use a radio system, you are modifying the actual coverage variables to be accurate or to be uh, corrected to the radio system. This allows you to create many coverages very, very quickly by simply adding a new coverage, selecting a name, and selecting the site, as well as then say, selecting the proper radio system. All the other variables are automatically filled for you. So we click on the radio system, and then we get the radio system button. Once we have the radio system, we can then hit uh, select the radio system to edit it, or click new to edit a new radio system. Now, this screen is going to become familiar to you because this is basically what most of our website does. We have transmitter site information, we have receiving station information, and then we have system performance variables. So the very first thing you need to do is to create a new radio system name at the very top. Very easy, very basic. Next, we have a new radio system transmitter information. What antenna are you going to use? What well, zenith is the antenna? And what antenna tilt? Now this is mechanical tilt. Mechanical tilt is typically going to be down tilt, and down tilt is a negative number. So if you put two, de uh, two degrees of down tilt, you need to put negative two inside that. Most antenna patterns that have electrical down tilt should include the electrical down tilt in the pattern. You do typically do not need to place the electrical down tilt plus mechanical down tilt in the antenna tilt. Your antenna gain what frequency, and TX power. Your receiving station is your most powerful receiving station. Typically, we see 25 dB gain antennas for Wi-Fi systems or Wi-Fi enabled systems, uh, as well as the average client height. If you have two-story buildings, you might have 20 to 25 foot of average client height versus an area that only has one-story buildings, in which case you may be only 10 to 15. And then you also have your antenna RX line loss, if any. Next, we have our system performance variables. The RX threshold is the minimum signal to show. So in this particular case, we have a NAG70. Anything that falls below NAG70, so NAG71, will not be shown on the map. We also then have our strong signal margin, and this is measured in dB. What this basically says is, is from NAG70 to NAG60, we're going to color that red. If it's greater than NAG60, it's going to be green. 
And of course, you can change those colors as well as what the difference is between strong uh, and not so strong signals. You can specify your opacity, your maximum range. This value is very important. Again, when we do our EUS, our end user submissions, if a customer is within the antenna beam pattern, but let's say they are at 12 kilometers versus uh, the radio system being set up for a maximum range of 10 kilometers. If they are at 12 kilometers, then that radio system or that coverage will be excluded from the end user submission system and will not show up as a valuable option. So it's important to set your maximum range. You have your rendering quality. Do you wish to use land cover data or not? If your system supports two, two rays, this is a uh, basically uh, antenna bouncing or uh, radio system bounces off of uh, buildings. Most of the time we do not use two rays for Wi-Fi based systems. You also have the checkbox to allow you to create view sheds. View sheds basically set the density of all your land cover to maximum. So think of the radio waves as coming into some trees and it hits a brick wall. However, your tree height is still there and it will still go over your trees and it will cast a shadow beyond that. So editing your new radio system in your mobile, you can view your radio systems in the mobile page or you can create new. Again, creating new or editing is very, very similar. We just do not have all of the nifty little uh, options that you do have uh, inside the main website. In Radio System Mobile, you can create new radio systems as well. You just have to select all of your information. Next, we have our coverages. Coverages are our core feature of TowerCoverage.com. It is typically based on each sector antenna on a tower per frequency. So if you have 2.4 gigahertz on the tower and you have three 2.4 gigahertz sectors, and then you have four 5 gigahertz sectors, that's seven coverages that you would need to uh, populate. You can create your coverage based on each sector antenna and frequency for active propagation calculations. You will typically need an antenna patterns of your uh, own uh, or one of the provided antenna patterns to uh, process your coverage. So we click the coverage button and note we get all of our coverages. We have the ability to search by name, center site, antenna type, or exact center frequency. We've actually added some new features in our version three of our product. One of these is we can check our boxes and we can hit the delete check. Of course, that deletes our coverages. However, we also have updated selected coverages. And what this is, this is allows you to update multiple coverages simultaneously. So to do so, you will select multiple coverages and then hit update selected coverages. Inside here, we can select a radio system and then we can turn on or off what common antenna variables that we wish to have or we wish to modify. Now, this feature does use API calls, so just keep that in mind. However, in this particular case, I have three coverages, and I'm changing my client antenna, my RX line loss, my antenna gain, my TX power, and my TX line loss, and then I hit update. Note that these, proce these will process in a low priority setting, since you could update 200 or more coverages simultaneously. What that means is that means any anybody that's processing or creating a new coverage, those will go ahead of any jobs that you have submitted. Note that they'll stay queued if they're waiting for processing servers to come available. Next is new coverages. So we click coverages and then we click new coverage. Inside here we've created the new system that allows you to create a new coverage very quickly and efficiently. First off, you can pre-fill your coverage information by selecting a radio system. If you wish to do so, you can. However, all this does is pre-fill the coverage information, the transmitter site, the receiving station site, and the system performance variables from the radio system. You can then modify them however you wish to. You can then hit next, and then you get the transmitter site information. So here we have our coverage name and our tower site. Note that we will get the antenna height from the tower site that's based on the tower height that you put in. However, you can modify that on a per coverage or as needed basis. You'll then click next. Next, we have our transmitter site information. This gives us our antenna, antenna bat, uh, gain, beam width filter, 
azimuth, frequency, exact center frequency, as well as TX power and TX line loss. Most of this information will be, can be autofilled anyway from your radio system preset. However, it does not have to. You'll then click Next. Now you'll add your receiving station information, your average client height, client gain, and RX line loss. Again, this could come from your radio system. And then click Next. Lastly, you have your system performance variables. We kind of covered these inside our radio system. And if you selected a radio system, you would have these automatically be filled in for you. However, you can change them based on each individual coverage. Note that we have some exclamation points, some red and some orange ones, or I'm sorry, yellow ones. The red ones means these are variables that are required to be filled in prior to committing uh, and creating our coverage. Note that our create button at the bottom is grayed out. We cannot create. The yellow ones means that they have not changed from default. So that does not necessarily mean that we cannot create one. So when we go ahead and enter a new map name and select a tower site, then our create becomes available and we can create a tower or coverage in our case. So in our case, our coverage is processing. Now once our coverage is processed, now we can click on our coverage and view our coverage from our home page. There we go. Now we have our coverage created. So now we have our coverage created. We can edit our coverage simply by changing any of the performance variables that we have on our right side menu, as seen here. Once you scroll down to the very bottom, you have your update coverage. This will re-render the coverage and reprocess. You also have the ability to delete the coverage as well as duplicate this coverage by entering uh, all the same variables, but you'll have to create a new site name. You can also close and expand the window. Any of these uh, windows that we have on this, you can expand and close by clicking the expand and close button. This is the closed button and that's with it expanded. Next, we have our roadmap variable. This gives us our ability to see a satellite or a hybrid or dark map, so whichever one you wish to do. We also have our KML overlays. This allows us to view any of our KML overlays that we've uploaded in our My Accounts uh, or our account. We also have our map data. Our map data is available only in coverages. We have population and land cover. This was the data that was used to create your actual coverage as well as give you your population number. This is your land cover. Note that when we go back one, we actually see that our map is actually quite large. That's because we actually have to load a tile or multiple tiles of data, average that out, and then use that data accordingly. The map tile, the image here, actually just simply shows you what land cover was used and where that land cover was. You can, of course, change its opacity. You can also change this to population. This gives you your population density that was used inside that coverage map. Note that we have a population field. This is the population of the area of which you cover. Now, this data is fairly uh, fairly light as far as the uh, uh, quantity of coverage, so it is just an approximation. You also have estimated square kilometers, estimated square miles that you actually cover, as well as the estimated population in your map. Next, we have our view EUS data. Now, we're going to cover viewing EUS data later in our webinar here. However, it is important to note that you can view any of your EUS data, as well as any of your safe searches, from this button. When we go to our coverages in mobile, we can select our coverage, we can create a new coverage, and then we can use the same exact feature set that we had inside our main page. We can select our tower site, we can select our radio system, we can change any of the performance variables as needed. By going to coverages, you have the new button, and then you also have the buttons to select for all of your existing coverages. And you can view your coverages inside your mobile website. Note, inside our mobile website, we actually have a uh, overlays button, which allows you to view the EUS data, as well as any of uh, your other overlays that are available. We also have path analysis. Now, this is available on both our multi-map, as well as our single coverages. We also have our terrain in satellite views available as well. When we look at our multi-map, 
or our coverage map. We can actually select a pin somewhere inside our area. So we can just tap a pin or we can zoom in and tap and place a pin. However, when we click on path analysis, we actually can use your phone's GPS, assuming that it's available, to place your pin. So you can select place, place a pin on the map or use the GPS to process your link paths. So this is a link path that was completed for a single coverage. Note that we have our link path, we have our client alignment and tilt. Note that this one has almost 10 degrees up tilt that we need to have. Uh, we assume uh, we're going to align at 56 uh, bearing of uh, 56 degrees. We should get an egg 45 out of it. And it's about 0.9 miles out. Note again, you can use your overlays to view your EUS data in the mobile website as well as click on anything in the EUS and view those settings. Alrighty, next we're going to have links. Now links are just that, they are point-to-point -point RF links. Because they are point-to-point, -point, we are going to provide all the RF output information, all the antenna gains, that type of information, but we're not going to include antenna patterns. And the reason for that is that we are assuming it's a point-to-point -point properly aligned link. Therefore, there is no antenna pattern uh, that really should make any difference. So to create a link, you're going to click the links button, and then you can select a link, you can delete the checked links, or you can click new link. You also have several other search options available here as well. So creating a new link, note that this is very similar to what you've seen before. We're going to give it a link name. We can select the radio system if we wish to. We're going to select a site A and site B in a frequency. We also have the transmitter site information, the heights available. Now, if you select one, if you select a, a site one, it will autofill the site uh, one antenna height as to what that antenna height is. However, you can change that on a per site by site basis. All the rest of information, your transmitter site transmitter information, your receiving station and system performance are all the same. At the very bottom, you're going to create a new link. Here's the link that is created. Again, you can close and open the window if needed. When we close this, we actually get our performance of our link down in the lower corner. We have our signal margin. The signal should be negative 49. We have our RX sensitivity, the distance, all that good information. If your account allows it, you can also download your Google Earth flyby. We also have this wonderful slider on our map. Note that if we slide it, our map changes and it shows you the exact point of which that slider is at. You can adjust it by simply using the slider. Again, if you have an account that supports the Google Earth flyby, you can download your Google Earth flyby by selecting that link. We also have viewing the link. In this particular case, our link is pretty flat, less than uh, 0 0.4 degrees off, and it gives us our bearings and our zenith for directing our antenna installers. Viewing the links in our mobile dashboard is very similar. We're going to click on links. We can click on a link or we can click new. Here is an existing link that we've already put together. Note that we do not have our uh, side view in this particular one because there's not enough screen real estate. We're assuming a mobile browser. Because of that, we have our performance, and by clicking on the performance, we get our link path analysis, our side view, all of the performance details, uh, direction of zenith tilt. We also have the settings button. If you wish to modify any type of information, you can click settings and modify those or delete the link as well. Next is our link groups. Link groups is just a collection of links. It's used to display links on multiple maps. So how we do this is we click link groups and then we can either delete or edit or create new link groups. Very similar to the way the rest of the site works. Inside a new link group, we are going to give it a new link group name and we're going to select a line color. We then select links that we wish to include inside our link groups. By doing so, we move them from our unselected link section to our selected link section. And then the selected links will be placed inside the uh, selected link section. And then you can create the new link group. We will show you how to view the new link groups once we get to our multi-map page. To modify the link groups via the mobile site, very similar again to all the rest of them, we click on multi, uh, I'm sorry, our link groups. We can search, we can create new, and we can edit new link groups. 
Now, the difference with the mobile site is because there's not enough screen real estate, we've actually had to add a second page. So this is the page that says here is the uh, link groups that we already have. And then you click the links button, and then it shows you the links that are available. All you have to do is click the link button again, and it will show you the new link group uh, with the new files, and then you can update your link group. Alrighty, multi-maps is really the heart of the site. We really use them to show where you actually cover, and we actually uh, merge multiple images to create one master image. The update page of your multi-map actually gives you iframe code. This code you can paste on your website, and you can also customize the form uh, on the API page underneath your account if you wish to. This gives you your EUS data. We give all the options such as view link groups, EUS, frequency groups, best towers, etc. all from our multi-map. So to view our multi-map, we're going to click the multi-map button. Again, you can search by name. You can select public, data collection, or show pins. And you can either select a map or you can create a new one. So when you create a new map, you're going to need to give it a map name. And then you're going to have to select which multi-maps you wish to have included inside your multi-coverage. Then you're going to check the box that says Add Selected. That will move them from the unselected box to the included coverages box. And then you can create a new multi-map. Adding multi-maps via mobile website. Again, this is your mobile browser. Again, you're going to click New. Then you're going to give it a map name. And then you're going to click the Coverages button. Again, this is due to the fact that we do not have enough screen real estate to show everything all at once. You're then going to select which coverages you wish to add to your multi-map. You're going to hit the Coverages button again, which will then take you back to this uh, and show you the included coverages. And then you can create your new multi-map. So now we're going to talk about our EUS data, how we use our EUS data, how the e end user submission system works, and where do we get the end user submission iframe code to use. So now we're going to go to our multi-map and we're going to select our multi-map. So we're going to view our multi-map. Note over here in the right side we have options to update, uh, we have the add button to add multi-maps to it. Uh, we also have the red axis to remove multi-map, uh, remove coverages from this multi-map. Anytime we add those, we're going to have to update our multi-map. However, note that we have EUS data collection form turned off. This iframe piece of code right here is all that is needed to place a coverage map on your website. That's the default option, the default website and integration. And you can test this by using your test button. So by using the test button, you're going to get a page similar to this. And this is how it's going to look on your website. It's actually going to show you the address bar. It's actually going to show you uh, the map and satellite view. And it's going to show your coverage. Now, if you go back to your multi-map and you check the EUS data collection form and update your multi-map, then you will get the EUS data collection form. You do not have to change your code on your website. It just automatically changes for you. By a customer filling this data out on your website, we actually geolocate the address that is given to us. They click continue, and then we actually put a pin of exactly where we think they are. Now, geolocation is not perfect, and because of that, we actually want to get a perfect service address, or a actual perfect service GPS is even better. In this particular case, it thinks that our address is at that location when in fact it's actually right there. So we would actually move our pin to be on top of our building. Sometimes 50 or 100 feet could make all the difference in the world and that is why we have them move that pin. Now note, if I go back one more screen here, it says to move this pin to the exact location, click on where you wish to have the service. That actual text can actually be modified by modifying your EUS settings, which I'll get to get to momentarily. At the very end, after they click finish, it then shows a zoomed in page of the map and it shows if you're in the green area, you should be able to get our service and a representative will be able to contact you. However, you do not have to show your coverage. I'm going to repeat this. You do not have to show your actual coverage. In our EUS settings page under our account, we can actually set exactly what we wish to have 
shown to our clients. So if we go to our EUS settings under our account page, we have our EUS iframe settings. Now this is only for that iframe code that we gave you. We can say, what is the EUS landing? Do we want to display a coverage map? Do we wish to redirect them? Do we wish to simply give them a message? What message do we wish to have or do, what is the URL format that we wish to send them to? What is that movable pen text and what is our EUS email that we're going to send our EUS to? What is our email address of our weekly EUS submission report? We have our Google Analytics ID and then we have our EUS iframe text. What this is, this is our iframe text and this is, if I go back here, just to show you, show you. Inside our iframe, we have the iframe text at the top. That's a, a one variable, and then first name, last name. That, those are all variables. We've done that because a lot of cus customers use different languages, and they wish to type it in in their language. So it's very important for you to go ahead and make sure that that is exactly what you wish to have. So to view your EUS data via mobile website, you're going to go and click on your multi-map, and then you're going to go to overlays. And then you're going to select View EUS Data in All EUS. And that's going to give you your EUS data. Again, you can click on one of those, and then that will give you your uh, EUS data. You can also use Path Analysis here as well. So how do we view the end user submission data? So let's take a look at that. So we click EUS Data, and this gives us all of our EUS data, starting from the most recent at the top down. We have options to edit and reprocess, so we can select a number of customers and then we can reprocess. This does use API calls, but we will tell you that this feature uses that and we will give you your current counts. You do need to select which coverage you wish to use uh, to reprocess on because it may not be the same one. Maybe you have a new uh, multi-map that has new towers that you're getting ready to put up. And also, do you wish to resend that email? We also have the ability to download your EUS data available here. And you also have the ability to delete any of your data up there as well. If you click on any one of your fields, you're going to get this page. This page gives you your link path analysis, the, the six best tower sites. Now, how we do this is we actually take a number of variables from your coverages to determine where the clients are. So we have a client GPS, and then we have the tower GPS. Then we have the tower's azimuth, which is the bearing of which the antenna is pointing. And then we have the beam width on the tower. And then on top of all that, we still have the max range of that coverage. Now, if it's outside of the beam width, if it's outside the max range, uh, then it is not considered as a good antenna to be used. And we do not process on that. We actually look at it and say, no, that's not going to be processed. But then we process up to 200 paths to get you the six best paths. Inside here, we can update your records by simply typing customer comments uh, or clicking on the new EUS and changing your customer type. And then you can update your records. You can also edit and reprocess. By doing so, you actually get the customer data there. And then you can actually type it. You can change the multi-map. You can also move their PIN if you wish to. And then save and reprocess. When you're viewing your EOS data, you can view all, you can view the most recent, or you can do advanced search, save searches, so you can view save searches, or you can look at best towers. Let's take a look at advanced search. The advanced search gives you the ability to look by site and distance from a site, city address, country, zip code, uh, submission date, is it new service, is, do they, is it a new EOS, is it serviceable but not installed, etc. You can also save that search by clicking the Save Search as Yes and then typing a search name. To view those searches, you can click on Save Searches. Those are the saved ones. And then you can click on the View button to view those saved searches. Or you can hit the red X to delete that saved search. To view EUS data in mobile, again, same thing. You're going to click on EUS data. You're going to get the data. And then you're going to be able to select uh, which one you wish to have. Note that you have View All, Most Recent Advanced Search Fields down at the bottom. Um, one thing that is not possible to do from our mobile website is the best tower. That is a, uh, a complicated process, and uh, we have not mobilized that one as of yet. 
However, you can then click on the EUS data, you can view that, and then note that we don't have enough screen real estate again to show you all your links, so you have a links button. And this shows you all of your path analysis, uh, and you can scroll that up as needed. You also have settings that you can set your, uh, uh, update your record, you can set your notes, uh, you have serviceable, you can set your uh, uh, edit and reprocess. All that information is inside our uh, EUS data on the mobile side. Now let's talk about our best tower. So best towers is actually a very complicated process because let's say you have 200 customers that are no installs within let's say three miles, uh, three or four miles. We actually have to do path analysis on all 300 of them. So that can take several hours to get complete. However, at the end, we are going to be able to see the where the best place is to put a tower based on that, as well as the ASR database to show where existing towers that have been registered with the FCC are standing. So to create a best tower, you're going to click best towers, and then you can either view or delete any of them, or you can click new to create a new one. So to create a best tower, you're going to have to have a saved EUS. We have to process based on something, and we typically can't do for all. So in this particular case, we selected Dittmer 10K. We then create a best tower name. We say how we wish to see land cover. You can do a view shed on that. Select your frequency, TX power, TX gain, RX antenna gain, RX threshold, and the AP antenna height. The AP antenna height is what height would you install a tower? So if you're at 100 feet, 200 feet, et cetera, you would set that there. And then the average customer antenna height. Note that this process can take a while. It can take several hours to get created. But once you get that created, you get something like this. This is a beautiful example of how many customers can you get. Note that we have some red areas in, inside this map. And what that says, that means we can get close to 100% or at least 75% of the customers that we processed. Inside here, we also have uh, our GPS location. So we have the uh, antenna structure, the FCC uh, CSR database, uh, uh, I'm sorry, ASR database. What this is, is this is our ASR database from the FCC. We import that once a week. And if you click on one of these little dots, you will then get another link that will take you to the ASR page for that antenna. So you can contact the antenna owner. You also can move your mat, uh, your pin somewhere around here. Note we have a pin here on Hillsborough House Springs Road. We actually give you the longitude latitude of the pin as well as the service address of that pin uh, as best as possible. So in note right here, we have three towers that are all in red areas that would probably make a good uh, tower to get 75% or more of the clients. So now we're going to continue viewing our multi-map options. Uh, we kind of covered that a little bit, but now we're going to get into the nitty-gritty. Inside here, we have all of our coverages. So you hit multi-map, and you click your multi-map. Now you have your viewing your multi-map. Of course, you can edit it, and you can make EUS data, but we're going to focus down here on these multi-link map uh, options. So one of these options is view EUS data. Again, we kind of showed you how to do that in our mobile site, but now you can do that inside our multi-map as well. You can click on any one of those, and then you would get the EUS data form uh, just like as if you went into them and in, uh, through the EUS data field. You can also sort just by your safe searches as well. You have your ASR data. Again, this is where it shows you all the ASR towers uh, in the area. These are FCC database listed. Uh, we import those again once a week, and we have the registration number and height of structure available. If you click on the registration number, it will take you to the FCC antenna structure registration. So any tower above 200 feet, for the most part, uh, needs to be registered with the FCC, and it will give you all the information that you need to try to contact that particular tower. We then have our radar button. This loads a local radar, live local radar, to overlay on top of your map. There we go. Now we have our link groups. So this is our link group feature. We can select multiple link groups, turn them on and off. You can also click the link group and that link, uh, or I'm sorry, you can click the link 
and that link will then display your path analysis along with your detailed information on that link. You can view your frequency overlays. These are based on the beam width as well as the max range of, the fre of your uh, coverages, but you must have that uh, exact center frequency put in. We also can select our path analysis. We can place a pin anywhere on side our map. In our mobile version, we can also do this, except we can use our GPS location. In our non-mobile page, though, we actually get the six path analysis. We can click on each one of those. We can move our map. We can move the uh, slider to do that as well. Again, viewing our multi-map inside our mobile page, we can select overlays. We can uh, add our link groups. We can add and see our frequency coordination as well. Now, the website integration feature is probably one of the best features on that. Now, you do not have to make the website integration iframe as part of your website. We have a number of clients that have a back-end website or just share the link with their internal people to perform path analysis on. So that if a cl client calls up and you want to see if they can get service, they can type that information in, they can find their home or business, and then submit it to them. Um, you can use our iframe code. Our iframe code is totally free. However, if you wish to have more customization, you need to use our API interface. Uh, we will email you a EUS result within five minutes of the EUS being submitted as well as we can push that to your billing or CRM system through our EUS, EUS push API. Uh, what's really nice about our website integration is that we're very quick about it. Uh, I couldn't tell you how many times our CSR teams call up a customer and say, hey, looks like we can get your service. And they're like, I just submitted that like two minutes ago. I'm still on your website. That is a very, very powerful thing to be able to give a customer a call and, and actually uh, have them still on your website because and say that hey we can schedule an installation so if we go to your account page and click on API this gives us our API details this here gives us lots of information it gives us our EUS billing API so this is our EUS push information so this pushes information out uh, we have a number of billing platforms that we're directly integrated with that we can push to uh, you can select that you typically need an API key, username, and password. You can update that right here on this page. It will also show you how many EUS submissions and the push URLs for all of our APIs are. It will show you the current number of APIs that have been used. There you go. But we also have this EUS API template generator. Now, this is kind of an interesting thing. Because some customers wish to use our API and wish to have a much nicer looking uh, or a, a nicer looking page, we have created an EUS API template generator. And this is what that template will create. So the template, which is the left side of the screen, is the check for service. And this is, you can create and change this however you wish to by selecting options inside the form. So you can select your multi-map ID, your account ID, key ID, you need all that. You can say the title, the default state, the country, uh, all of this information you can select. And then you can click show code. By you showing the code, it will show you the code for that API. Now, because of this, we can uh, you can modify the code however you wish to. It is completely on you to, to do so. Uh, if you do not have someone that can code, that can actually program this, then we really suggest you only use the iframe because the iframe is fully supported. Uh, it is just simply an iframe. It's very, very simple. If the iframe can be HTTPS or HTTP. Uh, you just have to change the, the URL uh, inside the iframe. It's very, very easy. But the API interface, if you wish to use this, you can do that. On our mobile site, you can view your mobile API calls page. It gives you the number of submissions, the number of current calls used. So the last portion of our uh, webinar here is the FCC Form 477. Uh, you have to file this twice a year if you are a broadband subscriber, or I'm sorry, a broadband service provider. Uh, most of our customers are broadband service providers. They are providing broadband service. 
There is two main sections that relates to us. One is the broadband subscriber data. This is what census tracks that you have clients in and their speeds. Now there's about 22,000 census tracks and most decent billing platforms can export the census tracks for you along with creating the broadband subscriber data. However, the broadband deployment data, which is another section of Form 477, this is what census blocks you can provide service to within a reasonable amount of time. And there's about 22 million census blocks inside the United States. The FCC does not define what is a reasonable time and they also want to know what speeds you can offer inside those census blocks. Now this is very important because by you deploy, uh, by you giving them this data, they know that that area is served. And if it is served, then that means somebody cannot get money from the U.S. government, from the USF funds, to overbuild your service. So it's very important that you actually have and submitted this data twice a year. Now, if you go to our orders page and create a new order, you will note that we actually offer both of uh, both services. We have the fixed broadband deployment data, as well as the fixed broadband subscription data uh, available for purchase. You can purchase those twice a year if you wish to, and it's definitely not no big deal for us to get that done. Typically, it takes about four hours to get the fixed broadband deployment data done. Uh, usually it's done a little bit quicker, but it all depends on how busy everything is. And the fixed broadband subscriber data is pretty easy as well. Um, the deployment data needs to actually be RF coverage. The FCC has gotten so many uh, circles from a center point. So where your tower site is, they draw a 20 kilometer circle and they say, oh, that's my coverage. If, if you're in flat and open terrain, maybe, but in most cases, the answer is no, that's not going to be your coverage. So you need to make sure that you have your coverage uh, accurately depicted on site. And they are not accepting uh, those circles anymore. So very, very important. So on the fixed broadband deployment, you'll select your multi-coverage. And then you'll sit there and click pay here. Uh, and then, like I said, once that payment is done, it takes about four hours for us to process that. So with that said, we have our wiki.towercoverage.com. This is our online documentation and how-tos, uh, how to do everything on -side, uh, inside towercoverage.com. If you have questions that can wait a little bit, we have our support at towercoverage.com email. Please send an email to that if you see any problems, if you see some feature requests, any any type of non-emergency type service, please send to support at towercoverage.com because you, our clients, are very important to us and we want to know what you think of our product. We want to know uh, what features you would like to see, and we keep a running tab of all of our feature list. Uh, we have a whole bunch of feature, feature requests, and if you're the only one that's requested it, then that feature is probably not going to get developed anytime soon. However, as feature requests come up, we continue to add and add and add, so it's very important that we get those feature requests to our support email. If it is a network down emergency or if you're just having some problems and you need to talk to somebody, it's not a big deal please give us a call, 314-735-0270, and hit option three. Uh, that line is open from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Uh, Central Standard Time. With that said, thank you very much. Uh, that concludes our TowerCoverage.com presentation. We hope that everybody enjoyed this, and if you have any questions, please email us or contact us at the number and uh, email address provided. Thank you very much.